got it right here. Morning, everybody. We are doing a youth Sunday again. I know I don't look very youthful with my bald head glaring up here, but I'm under 30 still. So, and speaking of, if you're a younger person, come sing in the choir with us. You don't have to be a youth, so to speak. Um, a couple announcements. We have our winter trip to the Highlands Outpost this Saturday and the QR code and everything is on the back of the prayer list and the adults need to register as well as the kids. So if you're going to register yourself and your kid and you will have to provide your own ride up there. Um, Trista Houston has a bridal shower March 2nd at... Uh, where is that, Habersham EMC? Habersham EMC, March 2nd at 10 a.m. <clears throat> and we have a card from Doug and Ginger Bleckley. Kindness is more than nice than the nice things you do. It is what you are through and through. <clears throat> Words cannot describe how much we appreciate the love and support shown to our family. We have felt each and every prayer that has been prayed <clears throat> on our behalf. We love each and every one of you. Love, Doug and Ginger. And another thing, if you are older than a teenager and are looking for a Sunday school class, we are inviting you to come to our young adult Sunday school class. If, you're, if you have small children, come to the young adult Sunday school class. That can range from 20 to 40. So that's, uh, you'll get a blessing out of coming to Sunday school. And it's been on my heart a lot lately. You know, if you don't feel like you're getting enough out of church and out of just coming to church, you know, it might be God telling you you need to step up and do other things within the church. Like we have the shut-in ministry and the care team and we got challenge. There's a bunch of stuff that you can get involved with in the church. And you won't, you'll get a blessing out of it. It'll be you'll grow ten times the amount you would from just sitting on the pew each Sunday. I know from experience. I've been teaching the teenage Sunday school class for two years now, I think, and my growth has been tremendous in that amount of time. And it just, it's hard, and it's hard to get out of your comfort zone. I never thought I'd be doing it. I never thought I'd be standing up here talking in front of the whole church. But we're here because... We serve a big God, and we can do all things through Christ. <clears throat> Any birthdays? Mr. Pertit. All right. Got several. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Any anniversaries? No anniversaries. At this time, we'll receive the morning offering. The guys will come up. Stand in for me, Brian. He said, stand in for me. Justin, will you bless the offering, please? It'll be all right. 
All right, we're going to sing I Call It Home. Page 86. Somewhere beyond the grave There is a land Where Jesus went to prepare By his own hand And for the saved by grace There is a resting place And then a few Some call it heaven, I call it home, some call it dreaming, let me dream on, some call it paradise, somewhere beyond the skies, some call it heaven. I call it home Someone said you can't go Back home again And things will not ever be As good as they've been I've got good news for you when heaven comes into view, one glimpse and you'll know the best is yet to come. Some call it heaven, I call it home, some call it dreaming, let me dream on. Some call it paradise Somewhere beyond the skies Some call it heaven I call it home All right, young people, come join us in the choir. We'll be singing out of the black book.
got a few specials this morning that the uh, ladies are going to sing. could sing these songs as I often do, but every song must end, and you never do. So I throw up my hands and praise you again and again, because all that I for a 
bottom of my soul. Oh, don't you get shy on me, lift up your song. Cause you got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy on me, lift up your song. Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. So I'll throw up my hands and praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. Now, no, it's not much, but I'm nothing else fit for a king except for a heart. I've never tasted champagne and I've never fit with the popular crowd and I've been told by some around me this world's fun and I missed out I don't spend my time chasing fortune and I've never walked the halls of fame. I don't have a fancy education to put a title by my name. But I've been to Calvary and I met the one who gave his life for me. I'm forgiven and I've been set free from this world of misery. I've been to Calvary. My Lord is such a sweet companion. He's with me in my time of praise. When a storm steals my a still small voice tells me he's there And I have joy when they say I should weep And I have peace when it doesn't make sense I can rest content when I have nothing And persevere when I've lost all Cause I've been to Calvary And I met the one who gave his life for me I'm forgiven and I've been set free From this world of misery I've been to Calvary I was a slave to sin, all hope was lost But thank God I found I met the one who gave his life for me. I'm forgiven and I've been set free from this world of misery. I've been to Calvary and I met the one who gave his life for me. I'm forgiven and I've been set free world of misery I've been to Calvary
Amen. Just been blessed here to be in God's house this morning. I appreciate the young people. Appreciate them singing these songs. I told Ashley before the service, I said, just do what God would have you to do. And that's what we want to do. Just do what God would have us to do. I thought about the service this morning. I thought about a lot of things that's been going on around us. Seems like young people dying too soon. Folks taking their life. A lot of hopelessness. Troubles all around. I thought about some scripture. I've got a few thoughts I want to share with you this morning. I want you to know if you're sitting here today, maybe you're watching online, there's more to this life than what we can get and gain and do. There's more to this life, okay? It's not about how easy or relaxing we can have our life or how much fun we can have, things we can do. It's not about being satisfied. It's not about being self-fulfilled. Folks, this life is about preparing to meet God. That's what this life is about, is preparing to meet thy God. Coming to know God personally through His Son, a relationship with His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what this life's about. As I thought about all the things that are going on around us and all the things we've seen and lives turned upside down and misery and things on every hand, you say, what are you talking about? Just look around. Misery on every hand. Jesus said over in John chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, He said, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. We can come to Jesus. We can be saved. We can find pasture. What is pasture? That's what we need. Okay? Whatever we need, it can be found in Jesus. He said you can be saved. We can find what we need. We can come to Him. We can get peace in this life. But listen right here. The thief, verse 10, the very next verse, and Jesus said it. And you'll have to say amen when you read this right here and hear this. Is this not what's going on around us? The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. Ain't that right? And he's doing it all around us. He's stealing, he's killing, he's destroying lives, ruining lives, ruining families all around us. We can see that. Jesus said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Not only can we have life eternal when we come to Jesus, we can have a better life. Amen? We can have a better life. We can have abundant life. Folks, I'll tell you here this morning, I'm going to try to just... I told them to follow God and I'm going to try to do the same thing. I'm going to share with you just exactly what God's put on my heart. As I was sitting there and they sang that last song, I said, I've got to tell them just exactly. Because it, I didn't know what they was going to sing. If they had held a gun to me, I could have named what song they was going to sing. But as they sang the verses of that last song right there, it goes along. I'm going to tell you what life's about here today, folks. I've said this so many times, but maybe you wasn't here. Or maybe you was here and you didn't listen. We was, me and you, was created by God to love God and to serve God. Amen? That's what we was created for. Every one of us was created by God to love Him and to serve Him. But listen here, we was created also to be loved by God. We was created also to be taken care of by God. We was created also to be blessed by God. Uh, I tell you what, too, here now also, let me let you know this right here. You was created, me and you, we was created to be with God, spend eternity with God in heaven. Did you know that? That's what you was created for, was to spend eternity with God in heaven. Uh, let me tell you, hell was created for the devil and his angels. Amen. It was not created for men. It wasn't created for people. But I'll tell you one thing. All who reject God and the way to God, which is Jesus, all who reject God and the way to God, that's exactly where you're going to wind up. You'll spend eternity in hell where you wasn't even supposed to be. 
Amen. We was created to love God, to serve God, be blessed by God, uh, taken care of by God, loved by God, and spend eternity with God in heaven. But if you reject God and the way to God, which is Jesus, uh, that's where you'll wind up is in hell. Don't have to be, folks, what meant to be. Amen. That's just the way it is. Uh, folks will say, listen now, folks will say this. They'll say, oh, I can't believe that a loving God, you talk about a loving God, preacher, I can't believe that a loving God would send anybody to hell. Uh, folks, I'll tell you, you listen to this and you mark it down right now. If we wind up in hell, if you wind up in hell, if somebody winds up in hell, it will be because they chose. You say, nobody would choose to go to hell, preacher. Nobody. It'll be because you chose to reject the way. You've got to choose the way. You've got to choose the way to God. It'll be if you wind up in hell, it won't be because God put you there. It'll be because you chose to reject God's way, the plan of salvation, the man of salvation, Jesus. Almighty God, folks, here it is, and this is the truth. There ain't no getting around it. Almighty God, He wants to save. He wants to forgive. He wants to bless. Folks, this is a good God. He wants to do all this for us. He wants to save us, to forgive us, to bless us, to meet our every need. He wants to be in a relationship with you and with me every day. He wants to be a part of your life. Each person, that's hard for me to grasp, but Almighty God, He wants to be a part of my life and be with you, be with you at work tomorrow, be with you tonight when you lay your head down. God wants to be with you and bless you and do you good. Okay, His Word said He's no respect to persons. That means if He wants to be a part of my life, He wants to be a part of your life. Amen? No respect to persons. His Word says, Whosoever will, whosoever will, come to Jesus. Whosoever will, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, shall be saved. Whosoever, I like that word, it's very inclusive. Whosoever will humble the heart and come to Jesus. Uh, uh, here today, though, in the world we live in, folks, I'm, I'm afraid that so few are choosing God's way and so many are choosing their own way in the ways of this world. That's what I'm afraid of, that so few are choosing God in His way. Over in Deuteronomy chapter 30, through the Moses, the preacher or the prophet, whatever you want to call him, God spoke to the people. He said, I set before you this day a life and blessings and a death and cursing. That's what he said over there. You can turn. He said, children of Israel, here's the way it is. I set before you life and death or, or life and blessings or death and cursings. Anybody would say, well, I'd choose life. So many are not. So many are not choosing God's way. So many are not choosing life. You may be sitting here today and you not ever chose. You not ever nailed it down and decided you're going to go God's way and choose God's way. Maybe you did at some point. You said a prior, but you're not walking in God's way. Folks, we need to choose today. Joshua said, as for, I'm going to make a choice. Choose you this day, he said, but as for me and my house, and I thought about that. As for me and my house, I thought about all these children. Just bless me right good to see all these young people that some mom or a daddy or some grandma or grandpa or some caregiver had them in, in God's house today. That's a blessing. Folks, mamas and daddies, caregivers, grandma and grandpa, you need to do like Joshua said. Choose you this day whom you're going to serve. As for me and my house, he said, we're going to serve the Lord. Amen. Folks, that's where it's at. What's out yonder in the world is not going to do. We see what kind of misery and destruction that's bringing all around us. Troubles on every hand. You say, well, well, a lot of folks is in the shape they are in because of drugs and alcohol and addictions to sex and addictions to all other kind of things, all them old bad sins. You say, that's why a lot of people has not got things right with God. Maybe. But I'll tell you what else, folks, has not got things right with God is they're addicted to the ways of this life. They're addicted to money. They're addicted to riches. They're addicted to pleasures. They're addicted to self. A lot of people want to blame things on somebody else or this or that. My main problem has always been me. Amen? That's what it is. That's our problem is ourself. Okay? Uh, 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 the Word talks about being drunken in the things of this life. 
drunken in a, caring more about the things of this life than caring about God. I'm afraid that's where the world is today. In the times we're living in, folks say, I've got plenty, I've got money, I've got this, I've got a good job, I've got all these things, why do I need God? Why do I need God? You may say that here today, why do I need God? Uh, folks, I believe that's, the, and I'm just going to tell you the truth, what I think here today, that's why I think uh, overseas and in some of these places where we have missionaries and things, the gospel is received much more because them folks ain't got nothing. They're looking for what they need and they decide to choose God. In the world we live in, folks, there's Bibles laying around, there's churches on every corner, and so many people are going the other way, going their own way. Here it seems like we're too blessed, too blessed. Here it seems like we got no time for God, only self. I mentioned this the other night. One of the services, I said, I can remember whenever I would come to church on Sunday morning, and I'd think, check. Got that done for the week. I've did God my favor for the week. Now I'll be good for the rest of the week. Not that way anymore, and God's not pleased with that. Folks, we get, we get to come to church. We don't have to come to church. We get to come to God's house. We get to serve God. We don't have to serve God. But I believe, I believe in the world we're living in that we love the blessings as a whole more than we love the blesser. Amen? We love all the fun things and all the stuff we can do. Too prosperous. The times we're living in, too prosperous. We forgot about God. There's a way made. And so many, so few people are choosing the way. So few people are choosing the way. Folks, I'm going to tell you here, and I'm not going to be much longer. Here this morning, folks, there's a literal heaven. All right? There's a literal heaven out there. They've sang about it some this morning. But I'll tell you, there's a literal hell also. A way is made to enter heaven, and a way is made to avoid hell. So few are choosing the way. You say, how do you know that? Look around. There's so many people going out doing their own thing today, living for self and not choosing God. So few people choosing what really matters. There's, there's so much distress Misery in the world all around us that we live in. And a way has been made to avoid that. A way is made to avoid it. Jesus said that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Jesus said, I've come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. As the girls get ready to sing, I, I, I read this or heard it somewhere this week, but I'm just going to tell you here today, and I'm going to share this story with you, but I'm going to tell you here, here this morning, as I was thinking about it, and, and you, you see if it don't make sense. Folks, we can't really live until we get ready to die. We can't really live until we know that we're ready to die. Folks, that's what we need to do is get ready to meet God. We need to put God first in our life. Not just one day a long time ago, but every day. He wants to be a part of our life. C.S. Lewis. Some of you probably know of C.S. Lewis. He was, I believe, a British writer. Uh, may, been, may even preach some, I don't know. But I read this or heard this this week. It, it said, and he said this, and I'll agree 100%. In this life, if we will aim for heaven, what does it mean to aim for heaven? I believe it means that we prioritize eternity. I believe it means we make sure that we've got things right with God. Okay? I believe... Uh, if, that means if we'll humble our heart and be saved by the grace of God, if we'll aim for heaven, you think about it right now this morning, am I aiming for heaven? If we'll aim for heaven, uh, I'll tell you what will happen. In this life, we'll be blessed. Amen? In this life, we'll have what we need, what Jesus say. he give them, they, they can have life and come in and out and find pasture. That's what we need. In this life, if we'll aim for heaven, we can be blessed. We can have what we need. We can have life. We can have it more abundantly. And in the end, we'll have eternal life. We'll have a home in heaven with God. If we'll aim for heaven. Are you aiming for heaven today? But he also wrote, and he said, if in this life we aim for this life, here's what's going to happen. 
if in this life we make this life our aim or our focus, we will lose this life. You know you ain't taking nothing with you. If all you got is what you got on this earth, you're going to leave it all behind one of these days. If we make this life our aim, the focus of our life, you're going to lose it all one of these days. And you're going to miss heaven too. Ain't that tragic? That's chilling. That tra- that's so tragic. That's chilling of how many people are not choosing God and the ways of God and to live for God and going to miss out really on a blessed and being taken care of and loved and forgiven here in this life and then they're going to miss out on heaven and spend uh, eternity in hell apart from God forever. That's tragic right there. That's worse than a tragedy. That's terrible, folks. In this life today, what are you aiming for? Heaven? Or is it all about this life that we see? I'll tell you here, and I'm just done. This life is passing by. Amen? Has anybody figured that out? This life is passing by. James talked about it over in the fourth chapter, I believe. He said it's like a vapor. It appears for a little while, and then it's gone. Totally gone. That's the way this life is. It's appearing right now, but it's going to be gone. One of these days, maybe sooner than we think, this life's going to be gone. And here in this life also, I believe we shared this verse Wednesday night in 1 Timothy in the 6th chapter. You didn't bring anything in, and you're not going to take nothing out. Here in this life, what are you aiming for? Eternity, or are you thinking and living for this life? As they sang that last song, I believe it's probably what's on their heart, I believe. As they sang, and everybody stand, just listen to the words of this song, and, and, and if God speaks, knocking at your heart's door, what's important in your life? Maybe you need to be saved here this morning by the grace of God. Maybe you need to know that you're on your way to heaven. Maybe you need to come back to God here today. Maybe you need to reprioritize and focus your life on God and the things that's really going to matter in life. Whatever it is, you just do what God is leading you. As they sing, you ought to be finding your way to this altar, folks. we got opportunity here this morning. I believe the lines of communication is wide open between us and God if we'll humble ourselves and step out here this morning. If things ain't just right, or you could be closer, I'm going to ask you to step out right now. Well, I've never tasted champagne And ever fit with a popular crowd And I've been told by some around me This world's fun and I missed out I don't spend my time chasing fortune And I've never walked the halls of fame I don't have a fancy education To put a title by my name But I've been Calvary and I met the one who gave his life for me I'm forgiven and I've been set free from this world of misery I've been to Calvary my Lord is such a sweet with me in my time of prayer and when a storm steals my direction a still small voice tells me he's there and I have joy when they say I shouldn't and I have peace when it doesn't make sense I can rest content when I have Persevere when I've lost all strength. Cause I've been to Calvary and I met the one who gave his life for me. I'm forgiven and I've been set free from this world of misery. I've been to Calvary. A slave to sin, all hope was lost. But 
another verse the altar still open maybe you've got a burden on your heart for somebody you need to pray for maybe you've not moved and God's been speaking maybe you just want to praise God here this morning whatever the need may be folks I said we've got opportunity here today if things is not right we can get them right here today I believe that I honestly do I believe God's done already blessed and touched in lives here this morning but if you've got a need, and they'll sing another verse if they will. Maybe with every head bowed, every eye closed, nobody's looking around. You need to step out and come to this altar. God's speaking. I'm, I'm not doing it, folks. If something's stirring in your heart, that's God. He's wanting to draw you closer. He's wanting to do you good here this morning. Just do what it is He's put on your heart right now as they sing. I've never tasted champagne And I'm never filled with the popular crowd And I've been told by some around me This world's fun and I missed out I don't spend my time chasing fortune I've never walked the halls of fame. I don't have a fancy education Amen. to put a title by my name. But I've been to Calvary and I met the one who gave his life for me. I'm forgiven. World of misery, I've been to Calvary. You might as well just do what it is God's laid on your heart. He's a stirring, He's a speaking, He's knocking at heart's doors. Maybe you need to come to Calvary this morning. Maybe you need to come to Jesus for the very first time. Maybe you need to come back. Folks, it ain't worth putting it off. It's not worth putting it off, folks. He's speaking and knocking at your heart's door. Let God do something in your life. As these is coming, just come on and do what it is God would have you to do here today. If you need us to pray with you, somebody to pray with you, raise your hand. We'd be glad to pray with you. If somebody needs to be saved, you just want somebody to pray with you, you lift up your hand and we'll try to get there. Sing another verse. Folks, God's still working, I believe. He's still stirring. He's still knocking at heart's doors. Such a sweet companion meets with me in my time of prayer. Hey. When a storm steals my direction, hey. a still small voice tells me he's there. Hey. And I have joy when they say I shouldn't. And I have peace when it doesn't make sense. Content when I have nothing and persevere when I've lost all strength. Cause I've been to Calvary and 
and I met the one who gave his life for me. I'm forgiven and I've been set free from this world of misery. I've been to Calvary. Somebody else got saved, maybe somebody, I believe a lot of somebody's draw closer to God here this morning, and I just praise the Lord for that. I appreciate you being here. I've just been blessed ever since we got got in here. They went singing. I've been blessed, and I hope and pray you have been too. Has anybody got something you want to thank God for? Yes. We're going to have anointing and pray here just in just a second. Y'all come on, Jeff, if y'all will. So remember Tina Pruitt, and let's remember Bertha Literal and her family as she is uh, she's ready to go, and that's all that matters. And she's fixing to leave this life for life eternal. And we just pray and praise God for that. You know, and that's the way it is, and that's what we need to be ready for. Appreciate that. Has anybody got something you want to thank God for? Amen. I appreciate each one of being here this morning. I appreciate each one of doing what God put on your heart to do. And 
I thank God for His presence and for His Spirit here this morning. Uh, it's been asked, and, and uh, I know there was a call went out, but Marie Watts is not doing well at all, and Jeff is going to be standing in for her, and that we pray for her and her family here this morning. And Cindy's going to be standing in for Mary Couch, and she's been very sick and, and needs our prayers as well. So I'm going to ask you if you would, uh, everybody that would come up and let's, uh, let's, as we anoint these with oil and lay hands on them and pray, let's lift these up to the Lord. Jeff would also like for us to remember uh, Catherine Jones, and I believe Catherine will be having surgery on Wednesday or Thursday. So let's remember Catherine. And I'd ask you all also to pray for my friend Keith Nation, who's in the hospital and needs our prayers as well. Ed's daughter, Alicia, absolutely. 